never know what you're going to find. People throwing away perfect quarter round. Yeah, check that out. We need some quarter round. We've been looking at flooring for the van and trying to figure out what we're going to do. And we decided we needed some kind of trim. So maybe this will work. Check that out. And the funny things you'll see Steve and Audra doing in the neighborhood. <laughs> A sight you don't see every day. Somebody driving down the road on their bike with quarter round over their shoulder. Special delivery. <laughs> Did you order some quarter round? Score. That was an unexpected find. Saved us a few dollars. Awesome. everyone we just got home a couple days ago from our trip up north and we're back at our van build again we're going to be working on the flooring which is pretty exciting we're not going to have this plywood anymore we think getting this done will make another big transformation in the van before we went up north we spent a lot of time researching and looking at different flooring options we think we've figured out something that's going to work well we, you don't get to see it yet but for now we're going to measure and try to figure out how what we got will work and then we'll show you what's next. So we're working on our flooring. Audra's been busy trying to uh, draw it out so we know exactly where each piece will go. Working on this first piece and made a couple lines and I think the best thing to do will be to run some chalk lines and uh, just make sure that we're doing all of our calculations right before we go cutting up any pieces because this stuff ain't cheap. So now I guess you've seen what flooring we're using. This is a vinyl plank flooring from Lowe's. Not exactly what we were looking for, but we think it'll work. And we tried lots of other options and this seems to be our best bet. So as Steve showed you, we've been working on this diagram. So what I had to do, I don't know how people don't do something like this. I took each piece and because you can only cut it once usually and still use it, I labeled like this is the first piece we'd cut. And this will be the right side of it and then the left side would be down here. Uh, another example would be, let's see, where's number three? Where's the other part of number three? Oh, here. So if we cut a piece in half, the right side of that goes over here so the, this piece can slide under. And then here's the left side that has the tongue that would slide into the groove of the right side of this piece. So. It hurt my brain a little bit, but I think I got it figured out. We didn't want to have to buy another box, so you'll be able to see there. We did, we're not wasting much flooring at all. We're just getting it so it'll work perfectly. Hopefully. All right. So there's our first line. bases and just kind of double check ourselves what we're doing first is putting the one plank down and I'm marking where the edge is for that on either end and like so and then we're also measuring these planks are seven and an eighth wide so as we take the plank up we put a few marks on the floor with the tape measure, just to double check against the other marks. And then we do the chalk line. We lay the line out to make sure the marks are all lined up, and then we chalk it. What's this way? It's about five and a half. About five and a half. 
What about over there? What is it there? Here. So what we did, because we figured we'd need, it was six and a half, right? The width. I think we're pretty close. This is just under five and a half, this strip. And that strip we're looking at about five and a half, so. So what we did, though. For two dum-dums, I think we did good. So what we did was we figured that we needed six and a half, the width of six and a half planks, right? That That's was what, what I calculated. All right, so it was six and a half total that we need. And then, so we wouldn't have like a skinny piece over here that looked unbalanced. We decided we would cut some of that end. So we'd have more here, if that makes sense. We tried to kind of split the difference so it would kind of look better when it was all done. So in other words, we didn't want to have a real narrow skinny piece at either side. So to offset that, we uh, just took a little bit off of this side and a little bit off of that side. So each side is about five and a half now. So this is our middle line for our pattern. So now we're taking all of Audra's hard work and transcribing that to each piece. So we know for each cut what we're doing, where it's going, hopefully some method to our madness. So it got dark last night when we were drawing the lines out. Um, so we came back out and I just finished everything. I think it should work pretty well how we have it. We actually need less pieces than I originally calculated. Uh, so I think it's looking good. The next thing we're gonna do is actually um, what would you call that? Securing the two pieces of wood where the seam is. So when we walk over it, it's more secure. We're securing it. We're making it so it doesn't go up and down when we're walking over it. And then we got to figure out cutting out the step. And after that, we can start putting the flooring in. So we have two pieces of subfloor down. And right here at the seam, probably a little hard to tell, but there is a raised edge by maybe, I don't know, sixteenth of an inch or so. So in an effort to get that to sit a bit more flat before we put our vinyl flooring in, I have notched out um, area for these little brackets I had sitting in the garage. And I'm hoping that once we screw them down, it'll help level out that raised edge. So unfortunately it doesn't look like that effort did much to uh, reduce that little raised edge. I'm not sure what else to do. Sand it. sand it would be the last thing. So Audra had the smart idea of actually laying down a plank and seeing if we feel it when we walk over it. I don't know if it was a smart idea. So not only are we going to have the floor plank here, we'll most likely have a piece of carpet or a rug there anyway, probably even further reducing the feel. So I might sand it a little bit just to take what I can off of the, the edge and we'll call it done. Okay, so it's time for the next step, and it's something we've been dragging our feet about. No more monster steps up into the van. Well, it's pretty intimidating making this kind of decision, cutting into your floor. But after much consideration, I think we're ready to take the big step. <laughs> Get it? Step? <laughs> well, here goes nothing. So to make this 
this a little bit easier on myself than a drill a pilot hole. Wow, that's going to change things a lot. After a year and a half, <laughs> we finally have a manageable step. And I think the lady should have the honors. Look at this. Thank you very much. Before we start putting the flooring down, Audrey had a good idea of caulking this uh, seam in our subfloor, but uh, the only caulk I have sitting around the house is this caulk that we used for uh, our Max Air fan on the outside. And I'm kind of surprised, but it's all kind of drying up already. It hasn't been you know, probably less than a year old, right? So anyway. So I'm squeezing what I can out of it and just doing some finger painting. Figure something's got to be better than nothing in case water does ever spill and gets down in between the planks. We still have some protection. It is about the only class I passed in kindergarten, finger painting. I think what he might be forgetting is that we actually did the Max Air fan install probably over a year ago. So that might explain why the caulk has gone bad. I'm going to give you a C plus on neatness and an A minus on creativity. So you can For take an a overall grade of B. <laughs> so you can get a sticker to take home. First main cut. If you're not familiar with the scribing technique, you'll have to go back and check some of our old videos out. We use that technique a lot, I think, for uh, the cabinets, right? Uh, we use, use it everywhere. <laughs> a lot of our builds are cabinets, our bed platform. Here's the piece we used for the template. We'll see if this fits. Looks good. It's starting to get dark. I think we're now working on our fifth piece. I thought we'd have the whole thing done today. I'm always wrong. I always think it's going to take a lot less time than it actually does. So we'll see how many pieces we can get here yet tonight and then we'll have to catch you tomorrow or another day to finish the project. And by finish she means put another three pieces down. It's day two of flooring. We got a late start though. It's almost six o'clock at night, so we're not going to have a lot of time today before it gets dark. So we're going to see how much we can 
crank out again today and I'm guessing we'll be back at it again tomorrow. But hopefully we can make some good progress now. I think we're kind of getting the hang of it and we're getting the really the hardest cut out of the way right now that's right by the cabinet here and then the rest should be pretty much just straight cuts and we already have the measurements so if we're lucky which we probably won't be we could maybe finish it today. We have hooked this piece into the piece to the left so we know exactly the placement left and right as you can see over there and then we're just measuring out the uh, depth of like how far the cabinet comes out in these two corners and we're just marking the next piece for that cut so it's pretty important that we actually get this right because we don't have really any extra pieces when i did the diagram and all the calculations i figured out pretty much exactly how to use the two boxes to work with this area and the funny thing is the very first piece we cut I actually made a calculation wrong by an inch, but thankfully it was an inch in the direction that gave us more room to work with. Like we could still cut that extra inch off. I at first thought for sure that we had already messed up our first piece, but we were okay. So thank goodness for that. And hopefully we don't mess up any other pieces or we're gonna have to buy a whole nother box of flooring. That sure stinks, huh? Have you not smelled it? Definitely smells like plastic. Yeah, burning, melting plastic. All right. Nice. Well, here's our first mess up. This. Our flooring got damaged by the saw, the base of the saw, which is too bad because it hadn't been doing that. So the quarter, gosh, the quarter round will cover some of that, but not all of it. That's a bummer. good. And what do you think of that scratch? Is that going to be noticeable? You might not be able to notice it in the video. That's well, I'm wondering if there's any anything we can do like in a polyurethane type substance that we could just touch that up. Maybe once we get the quarter round down. It, once I give it, if I give it a good <laughs> spit, spit shine, it's not as and bad. It's, and it's kind of wet. It's hardly noticeable. But then when it dries, it... Hmm. So maybe, hopefully, we can find something to just lightly touch up that scratch mark and it won't be as noticeable. I guess at least it's on the edge. Whatever. It is what it is. You want it to be perfect and it never is. So there's always going to be little imperfections. It's a bummer, but it could be worse. The quarter round will cover some of it. Unfortunately, not all of it. Unless we get some real fat quarter round that's <laughs> two inches by two inches. That'd look great. Want to see what we accomplished yesterday? Check it out. Voila. So we're feeling a little frustrated with these seams. We thought the pieces would lock into place more, but as you can see, it's kind of loose. So we're, you know, obviously when you put the next piece in, that helps a little bit, but there is still a little bit of a lip on these seams which maybe that's not a big deal. We just expected it to be different. We expected there wouldn't be this kind of issue when you put the two pieces together. So let us know if that's been your experience if you've installed a vinyl plank floor. 
we've never done it before, so we don't know if this is normal or not. Okay, cover your ears. Oh, it's such an annoying sound. Out of all the projects we've done so far with the van, I think this is the most straightforward. It involves lots of straight edges. Uh, it's just a lot of cutting, measuring, cutting. Uh, the first part was definitely the more challenging of getting, you know, figuring out how it's all going to fit together. But once we got past that and cutting out the funny edges, I think it's pretty simple. I think um, one of the challenges is we're, is we're realizing now where we're slightly out of square a little bit, so we have to adjust um, in our flooring just ever so tiny. Um, so far it hasn't been anything drastic, which is good. Yeah. Just like a sixteenth of an inch here and there. A hair out of square as Trenton Alley would say. As they say, measure half a dozen times, cut <laughs> once. It's why they call it a square. And to the saw we go. And a thanks again to our friend and neighbor, Peter, who's letting us use his saw. This would be much more difficult if we didn't have all these tools that people have let us use. So putting the pieces together it's pretty straightforward. You basically just line up the left corner, make sure the piece is in the groove completely, and then you just push it down. And then you're supposed to use this mallet, but, but we feel like that really does nothing. So this is what we mean when we say we might be a hair out of square. Assuming that our chalk lines were indeed perpendicular to something in this van, um, you can tell that we're starting to get a little off. And that's more than a hair. I mean, that's starting to get more significant now. Obviously, we're getting close to the edge, so I think we're going to be okay. I don't think you're going to notice it visually. Plus, we have this stair edging that's going to go around everything, which is an inch wide, so little... Yeah, I think it'll protect everything. I'm concerned that we're going to notice, like, here's the edge that we think is straight, and then that this piece is going to be kind of off, so it's not going to be the same here. That's my biggest concern, but I guess we'll see how it turns out. We are probably pickier than most people, but in this small space, we feel like we have the novelty of time and uh, ability to do pay more attention to detail, so we are using this one piece here of the flooring to make sure that our seams are actually lined up. So we're double checking our measurements. Yeah, so we have a seam right here, which you may not be able to see, and one there. So then put our next seam here, which you can see how much that's off from our original line on the floor. The original lines that we made, we used more as a rough guide. In an effort to prevent any further scratching by my jigsaw, I used a empty box of thinned wheats and I used that to fashion a little bit of a guard on the foot of the jigsaw. So hopefully that does it. I got all the pieces down. Oh my gosh. It's so exciting. Oh my gosh. So much better than the plywood we had before. I love it. Don't show them yet though. We can't show you guys until all the edging is down and everything, the whole thing. Maybe just show them a little bit. Make sure to watch the next episode for the big reveal. And we'll share some tips and what we learned as we installed the flooring and we'll show you how we finish the step, the edging, and the trim. And you'll also hear Steve say. So what I try to do is I will 
on purpose cut a little bit extra more. <laughs> extra more. Boy, that was a horrible sentence. <laughs> <laughs> He'll do some extra more. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I will cut... I will cut it... What am I? How much... You know what I'm trying to say? You're going to leave extra. So... I'll, tr I'll cut see, beyond the line. Right, so, so then you can, can trim it. Go back and then trim it. Fine tune it. Fine tune it. <laughs> there, so you, there. you leave a little extra to spare to start. That's what and I mean. Then you trim it down.